Hello and welcome to Sunday Night Overtime with Coach Clays presented by the Minnesota Lottery. In this week for Justin Gard, I'm Corbu Status from the Gopher Radio Network. Coach, the team is 1-0. That's the perfect way to start after the 30-23 to victory over Oregon State. Your thoughts on how the team did in week one? You know, obviously the most important thing is to win and, and uh, that, that solves a, a lot of problems anytime you can do that. But it, at the same time, as the first games are first games. And, uh, you know, we had some sloppy play a little bit. We had a couple of snaps that, uh, that went over uh, Mitch's head that obviously you, you can't have. We dropped a punt and, you know, that cost us some points. And, and, uh, but at the same time, once they come back and took the lead in the third is we get the ball back and Mitch leads us. We go down 80 yards and score, take the lead. I'll score them 13 to nothing in the fourth quarter. And, and uh, for the adjustments defensively with the kids we lost, with injuries and, and penalties is that uh, I thought we finished the game really strong. And, uh, but, uh, you know, and, and the good thing is you can always go back and fix those, those mistakes. You'd rather do it after a win than a loss. You mentioned the defense. Let's talk about the defensive line and how they affected the play. I know Devers had two huge plays that really seemed to swing the momentum. Yeah, you know, he's a good uh, rusher off the edge and, and uh, he's very quick and explosive. And, and he put a couple big hits on the quarterback, got the ball out, and, and uh, you know the the shorter the distance that the offense had to go to score, and and gave us a, a jump start. And I think we had four sacks, you know, in, in all of last year. I think we had 22. So uh, you know, putting pressure on people was uh, one of our points of emphasis for this fall. And, and uh, I thought the coaching staff did a good job of getting our best pass rushers in there in those times. Those two forced fumbles really instrumental for the Gophers in that they were able to go down and score two touchdowns after that. Of course, a two touchdown performance for Rodney Smith, who also chipped in 125 yards on the ground. Coach, your thoughts on Rodney Smith and his job from the backfield? Yeah, you know, I think uh, he played 70 some plays and uh, you know, not only did he carry the ball well and, and uh, made some big plays and made them miss some tackles and create some plays. Is it, he also had a big uh, blitz pickup on a third down that allowed us to keep a drive going. So his pass protection as well. So uh, uh, excited to see him play for the rest of the year. Yeah, of course, uh, starting in place of Shannon Brooks, but really starting in place of, I don't know if that's a fair statement, Shannon Brooks injured, but Rodney Smith, he's just as good as a starter as Shannon Brooks is. Yeah, no question. They're both, uh, we'll miss, uh, you know, Shannon until he gets back. But once he gets back, he'll give us a good one-two punch. And, and those kids will... Uh, complement each other very well, very well. And so, uh, you know, that, it, that'll be the key to our running game. And, and it's going to be hard, you know, to if Rodney had to play 70 plays or Shannon had to play 70 plays all year long. So when you have two of them, there's a lot better chance of keeping them healthy. Well, one of the best parts about this Sunday night overtime with Coach Clays, besides hanging out with Coach Clays, of course, is that you get to submit your questions. And all day long at Go For Football on Twitter, we asked you to submit your questions. And JJ Wall 14 did just that his question coach your thoughts and assessments of the offense you know the only really negative part of it is we got started slow i was hoping we would get out of the gate and start a little sooner but at the same time with oregon state having a new defensive coordinator it took us a little bit to see some of the things they were doing and uh, then obviously the the missed snaps but besides that uh, we were 50 percent on third down we red zone scoring we were four or four uh, I thought uh, you know, we had a, a bunch of guys catch the ball, and I, that was important to me that we moved the ball around, and so Mitch did a good job of hitting the open receiver. Um, and then up front, I thought we played pretty physical, and we didn't give up any sacks and, and uh, didn't turn the ball over with any interceptions or fumbles. So uh, we'd like to get out of the gate sooner. You know, we don't want any points we don't score any, or any quarters we don't score any points, and we did in the first and the third. But uh, uh, the thing I was really pleased with, like I said, is the other parts not turned over, and then taking control late in the third and in the fourth quarter and outscoring them 13 to nothing. Let's go to another t Twitter question. This one from Jake Gust. Uh, Rashad Still, let's stick with that offense coach. Who steps in for Rashad Still, who of course hurt his shoulder in the game? Yeah, you know, it'll, it'll have to be a committee of people. You know, I thought that Tyler Johnson played awfully well and, and uh, um, you know, so we'll, we'll see, you know, Drew Walatarski. Uh, there's a chance we could get Eric Carter back uh, this week and, and uh, we've got a, a number of talented kids. They are young and uh, we'll see who practices the best and, and makes the most plays and then that's who we'll get in there to take care of his reps. Before we get to the next Twitter question, quick follow up on Still. Do we know when his uh, timetable is for his return? Not for sure yet. He'll definitely be out for this week and then uh, 
Uh, maybe next week sometime we'll have a better idea of the length of it. From Gopher 88, of course, being Rashad still, let's go to Gopher 80 who asked this question, understanding that many of the D-backs are underclassmen, what are your comments about what they might need to work on most? Well, you know, it, it, there's a lot of space back there playing defensive back and, and you're in a, a big area with a lot of great uh, athletes, a receiver. And so there's so much there to learn from splits to formations. Um, it takes a long time and each week you just try to get a little bit better because there's no way you can learn them all at the beginning. I think that uh, Coach Savell and Coach O'Brien have done a good job with those guys. And, and uh, you know, as soon as you learn what they're doing when they're standing still, then you get motions and jet motions. And so all those different formation adjustments and there are quarterbacks back there. They got to get everybody else lined up on the same page. So um, there's nothing better than experience. That's for sure is the best teacher. And, and hopefully we'll be able to get them more and more snaps. But I thought our secondary overall played pretty good tonight. Yeah, well, it helped the Gophers get a 30-23 win over Oregon State. We're just getting started. When we come back, we'll take your questions via Facebook Live and take a look ahead to the Sycamores of Indiana State. It's Sunday Night Overtime with Coach Clays, presented by the Minnesota Lottery. Here's the snap out of the power eye. Leidner is in for the touchdown. That's a record breaker. No Gopher quarterback has scored as many touchdowns as Mitch Leidner. And the Gophers go up by seven with the extra point coming. 127 to play. Minnesota 30 and Oregon State 23. It's Sunday night overtime with Coach Clays talking about a Gopher victory. Our thanks to the Minnesota Lottery who brings this to you on Facebook Live. Gophers victorious 30 to 23. I'm Corbu Status in this week for Justin Gard. He's on assignment. Uh, Coach uh, Mitch Leiner with 25 career rushing touchdowns. I thought he looked different. He looked healthy and he still looked like he had that power that he's always shown running the football. Yeah, he really does. He gets his pads down and uh, you know, it's a, it's a big honor for him to have that record. Uh, uh, Ricky was a great player here, and, and so uh, to beat that record is really something special. And uh, I thought offensively we managed uh, how many times he carried the ball and in the right situations. And, you know, that, that's quarterback. Anytime you're in quarterback, you can add an extra blocker. So it's tremendously hard uh, to defend. I think Mitch would tell you there's other things he can still play better at, but as far as preparing and all that is that, uh, he does a great job and, and uh, our kids have a lot of confidence in him. You ready for some questions? I mean, that's the best part about this Facebook Live thing. Sure. All right, let's get our first question. This one comes from Griffin. Uh, why did you attempt the two point conversion at the end instead of the extra point? Of course, that came when the Gophers were up 30 to 23, going for two there. Yeah, you know, is that uh, everybody's got different beliefs in, in what goes on. I, I'm on that late in the game and if you score a touchdown and you go up by seven, a two-point conversion will get it to nine points. It makes it two possessions, which basically is a game over. And so here you are, your team, you feel good about yourself. You just scored a touchdown. The other team being defensively, you know, they're probably mad, not feeling as good about themselves that they just gave up a touchdown. So if you can get that three yards, the game's going to be over. On the other side, if you don't, we didn't convert. If you don't convert it, you know, is that I still think if teams go down and score 95% of the time, they're going to kick the extra point and go to overtime. So I see as a chance you, you have a chance for a big uh, award with, with very little risk in, in my eyes. And, and that's we practice that with our kids all through spring and, and through fall. And, and that's the way I like to handle with not a lot of time on the clock. So that's that answer. Let's get another answer from this question from Benji via Facebook. How did the targeting ejections change the defense? Of course, three Gophers ejected for targeting. Yeah, and then um, um, uh, Nick Rollis got injured too. And, yeah. and so we had to move Jack Lynn over into the middle and play the mic in our base sets. But where it got us was in our, um, 
our substitute packages. We had to play more younger kids coming off of the edge. Uh, you know, Cody and Nick was their two edge rushers to start the game. So, you know, we had to play the young kids in there, but there's no better experience than, than playing. Uh, they, they did, not I'll tell you, they played hard. They made a couple of mistakes that cost us a little bit, but, uh, you know, that's our job, get them coached up, but they're definitely athletic. And, and uh, so it was more of in our substitution packages, it was causing us a problem there for a little bit. But like I said, we played awfully well there in the fourth quarter and, and kept them off the scoreboard. So we have some depth, we're just a little bit young. Let's go ahead to our next Facebook question. This one from Nathan. And we talked about Rodney Smith. Now this one about Shannon Brooks. When will Shannon Brooks be back? It was a good question. We should have a better idea. A Tuesday morning is his next doctor's appointment and, and uh, with the holiday being on Monday. And so uh, a Tuesday afternoon, we should have an update uh, with him. He's, he's um, out of the boot now, moving around and, and that. And so we're just waiting to get clearance from the doctors. And our next question is from Matt. You mentioned the long weekend. This one also wanting to know about the longer weekend than normal. Did you get a chance to watch any of the games on Saturday? Yeah, you know, as we came in Saturday morning, done some work, and, and the kids lifted weights. But I think it's important that opening weekend to get a chance. And so we give our kids off, and, and as coaches, I got a lot of chance to watch the games. And uh, I like the, all the different things that, that happened in the different games. And and so uh, you don't get to do that any other time but this one day. And I I'm, I'm got to be a big college football fan. I didn't pay attention yeah. to uh, what they were doing or what they were trying <laughs> to do. Is just just being a fan of the game, which, which I love a lot. Yeah, how many, there's so many games going on. Did you find yourself just flipping through? I mean, it's, my goal is to not see a commercial. And we love the commercial providers, there's no doubt about it. But my goal is to not see a commercial and just see wall-to-wall -wall football for three hours. Yeah, you know, I, I like the close games. As long as yeah. games are close, I'll flip around and, and watch the close games. And, and uh, so no different than the fans. Once they get out of hand, I kind of lose interest also. Sure. Well, let's hope that uh, some of the fans are tuning out to late in the third and fourth quarter because they've lost interest in the game next week because the Gophers are ahead by so many points. That's a long way of getting there. Let's talk about Indiana State. The Sycamores coming up next week out of the FCS. They went 1-0, and or are 1-0, I should say, after the victory last week. What can you tell us about the Sycamores? Well, one is, you know, their kids will play extremely hard. Uh, we, we've coached at that level before and, and in that same conference. and. You know, kids on, on that team in, in the 1AA is that, uh, you know, they feel like they should have gotten the opportunity to play Big Ten football. And so when they get to play the Power Five conferences, they'll play their best to show that they deserve an opportunity to be at, at the University of Minnesota. And so they'll play extremely hard. Offensively, there are a lot of one-back stuff that uh, is hard with the different options and run-pass options and jet motions and, and several different formations. So they try to keep you off balance there. And, and so it'll be a challenge with them spreading the field and getting the ball out there. And, and we'll have to be disciplined. It's, it's a lot of option stuff, and people's going to have to take care of the responsibilities. We're going to have to tackle well. Coach, you've been at that level. You said, did you use that as a motivating factor? And then, you know, they didn't recruit you. We wanted you. Why don't you go out there and prove it? And how do you coach on the opposite of that, where you know that's how they're going to come in? Well, when you want to be a good team and you want to be a championship type of team, you yourself is, it's not who you play, it's how you play. And, and we've talked a lot to our kids of respecting our opponents every week and respecting the process to prepare yourself. And, and uh, we need to control the things we can control. And if we do that, play hard, then things will fall into place for us. And, and on the other side is you really didn't have to talk to those kids much about motivating them and that. Sure. They, they knew, you know, they wanted those opportunities and didn't get them. And, and always had great practices. So uh, it'll be a, a challenge for us this week. And, and uh, but uh, like I say, I think it helps a little bit that a lot of our staff has coached at that level. And, and I'll tell you, our, our kids, I feel good about them. They, they did awfully well to prepare the last game, even though we'd done some things, made a few sloppy mistakes here and there. They did prepare well, and I expect that we'll prepare this week. Yeah, the Gophers will kick things off at 11 o'clock. Of course, on the Gopher Radio Network, you can hear things starting at 10 and the pre to the pregame on our flagship station starting at 9 o'clock. Coach, thanks a lot. We appreciate it. See you next week. Yeah, thanks for having me. That's the head coach, Tracy Clays. This has been Sunday Night Overtime with Coach Clays. And, of course, you can submit your question every time via Facebook Live. Thanks to the Minnesota Lottery. Good night.